You are listening to Three Kitchens Podcast, a member of the Alberta Podcast Network, locally grown, community supported. We release a new episode every Tuesday. Come join us for a new recipe and a good story. Today's episode of Three Kitchens Podcast is brought to you by the Edmonton Community Foundation. The foundation acts as a bridge between donors and charities to create a strong, vibrant community for generations to come. Anyone can start an endowment fund with the Edmonton Community Foundation, and once it reaches $10,000, it can start distributing funds. To learn more, visit ecfoundation.org. Hello, listeners. This is Erin Walker coming at you through your ears for Three Kitchens Podcast. And I am joined by the lovely Heather Dyer, just off to my left. How are you doing today? (laughs) Good, good. Your cat was just sitting on your lap as we got things started up here. And it made me think of, I just recently saw this in my feed but it was this fantastic sweater that had this pocket you could zip open and put your cat in. Yeah. And then it had a little hole. Yeah. So your cat's face could come through and then you zip it all up and they're all tucked inside of you, but their little head is sticking out and it was just (laughs) freaking adorable. And I was like, I want to buy this. Some of them have just kind of like a kangaroo pouch. (laughs) Yeah, I've and seen those. Big pocket with like kind of a drawstring at the top. And it's yeah. so funny in the ads because these people just basically pick up a cat, giant cat like with one arm and shove it in the pocket. Like just kind of throw it in the pocket, cinch it up. <laughs> and, they, and then they peek in and the cat looks all sleepy and cozy. Happy and yeah. I just Paco I want to like come that. over and borrow Paco for yeah. a, like a, I just want to sit and have him on my lap and hang out and... He'll sit on your lap without a fancy sweater. There you, you go. That. There you go. Yep. But then I can like leave your house and nobody will know and I'll steal your cat. I'll be a cat burglar. <laughs> oh, for real. For real. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it was like a person who had bought it or something. I can't remember if it was an actual paid advertisement, but it didn't look like the easiest thing to get their cat in. It was a bit of a production and it was rather fun to watch. Have you seen those? I think it's like a backpack that has a clear like plastic bubble on the back yes so the cat can sit inside and see out as you're carrying it around oh that reminds me one time i was down at like bonus park okay yeah and i saw there was a guy i was walking the dog and this guy was walking and he had a giant cage on the back like put on to like backpack straps and there was a very large bird in the cage that he was walking oh cool it was kind of funny interesting stuff some kind of bird that was talking and it kept yelling at people like (laughs) i don't remember what but it was sort of like this startling thing where it would like yell something (laughs) some of these carrying bags for your animals i saw one too that was like it was this bag for small dogs that fit in bags and Mm. it had like a lion's mane sewn onto the outside of the bag over this hole and so when you put your pet in the bag and then it sticks its hole out it looks like this little lion and it's got like a little cartoon body and everything on it (laughs) and like you really almost can't tell because this person has groomed their dog so spectacularly that like when the little head's poking out it's like like it almost (laughs) looks like a stuffed animal just on the side of this bag (laughs) You need to have some kind of pet that you can dress up and take out just because your husband hates when people dress up their pets. He gives me the hardest time if I post a picture of Rio with like bunny ears at Easter or something. And and what did he do when we looked after your dog? First thing he did was start (laughs) dressing up the dog. (laughs) So I, so this was an impromptu recording. I just, everybody, I just got this text from Aaron saying... (laughs) I need to record because I bought something at the store and I I have no idea what she bought. (laughs) Who knows what's in season right now? Uh, We're recording on Groundhog Day. Oh boy, are we excited. We only have six weeks of hell to go through instead of eight or whatever the... Is that what it is? I have no idea. No, it's six weeks more winter or early spring. That's usually what it... Is it? I I don't know. I feel like we live at a latitude that does not apply to Groundhog's Day. (laughs) (laughs) 
That groundhog should just stay in the ground. He should just stay in the ground. Like, what do they do to get this poor creature to come out of the ground? I can only imagine he was having a nice nap. Mm -hmm. So it is an in-season fruit that I have acquired. Well, let's see if Heather can guess based on my clues. I've seen them for the last two weeks and I keep putting them back and saying, no, you're not allowed to buy this. You don't have time for this. And the price keeps going down Oh, and going down. And I was like, damn it. Nobody else is buying them either. I'm going to guess it's that kumquat. You betcha. (laughs) They were a buck 40 something today. They were $3.99 last week. They were $5.99 the week before. So uh, I'm going to go with discount kumquats. And (laughs) what do you do with a discount kumquat, everyone? (laughs) I honestly have no idea. I've never eaten one that I know of. I don't know if I've eaten one either. Although when I looked online initially to see what can you do with these things, uh, a lot of marmalades came up. So in case you have never heard the word kumquat before, you have no idea what to picture. They are essentially like a cherry tomato sized orange is what they look like. They're these little round miniature citrus fruits. And uh, from what I've read online, it says you can eat the skin on them as well. So you don't you don't have to peel them. Hmm. And I have seen recipes for candied kumquats. I have seen recipes for marmalades. I have uh, narrowed it down. The recipe that I have decided to go with is called kumquat cake. Mm. Is this going to be anything like persimmon pudding? I can't. I sure. I'm I sure having hope not. kind of flashbacks to this other fruit that was like, oh, I don't know what to do with this, but I'm gonna. It's in season, and I'm gonna try it out. And then the pudding that was not a pudding. You know what, Heather? That is a totally valid question. <laughs> so we're kind of on a little roll with anybody listening. If you haven't listened to persimmon pudding, oh my, go gosh. back. The back in the vault, three kitchens. It is so funny. It was one of the most fun episodes yes and actually the persimmon pudding was very delicious it was very tasty so okay so heather recently uh did some experimenting with some cakes that she made in her instant pot and they turned out like tasty desserts and they were very good however they had very little cake quality to them (laughs) that's what i was saying earlier about the the cake that was supposed to be cake but really wasn't like what we were expecting it to be exactly is this going to be something like that no this says (laughs) it should be cake it looks fluffy and orange and it looks like a cake yes it does but not iced but not iced it has a glaze on it instead of icing Uh, you can also take this and make a cupcake with it. If you don't feel like baking a whole cake, you can make the batter and turn it into cupcakes, it also says. But I feel like we need a cake. I think we need cake. Yeah, why not? Everyone we needs cake. We always need cake. Right? When yeah. is the right time for a cake? Always. Anytime. <laughs> That's the answer. Always. Yes. All of those are good answers. Yeah, so this is going to be the fruit in it. It's pulsed up in a food processor, the whole kumquat, so the peel doesn't come off. And it gets mixed into the batter that we're going to be making. It gets baked in a springform pan. And then you uh, create a glaze and you can add some kumquats to decorate it if you have extra. And uh, let it cool, cut it, and serve it. And it recommends that you can have this with a scoop of ice cream or freshly whipped cream. I think we're going to find out what a kumquat is with this What does a kumquat taste like? This is very interesting. The peel is sweet and the juice is sour. Oh, I just did a quick little Google here and it says that they're Chinese. Hmm. I believe the ones that I bought could be a product of China. They could be from many places. Hmm. They're very adorable. They are very much like a miniature orange. Oh, um, it says a cold, hearty citrus. So, because not all of China is warm, no. depending on the elevation and where, what part of the country. So maybe it's more of a cooler. Well, you know what? I have to dice these up and take out the seeds. Maybe I am going to sprout 
some seeds. Let's just add more to the list, because really I haven't done, I don't do enough. Next year we will be cooking this with homegrown kumquats. Oh, January. careful what you promise. <laughs> Don't you know the rule that promises are meant to be broken, Heather? Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> Get ready to take the guesswork out of choosing a school. Go to Edmonton Public Schools Open House. Meet the staff and ask your questions to learn about their schools and programs. Explore your options and find the school that feels right. Find event dates and learn how to make the most out of your visit at openhouse.epsb.ca. Know before you go and feel confident and excited when you get there. What to say about these little fruits? Mm. Oh my goodness, they are amazing. So based on what I saw online when I had looked up what they look like, when you cut into them, I expected them to look kind of like an orange does on the inside. And then when I cut them open, they were kind of dry inside and there were lots of seeds. And I was like, oh man, I wonder if this is just going to be kind of disappointing because it's a fruit that we don't grow here, therefore it's not great. You know, sometimes when you get fruits shipped in, yeah. you don't get that full experience of the fruit. It was not what I expected inside either. I didn't cut it. I just took a bite out you of it. You took a bite? <laughs> and I was Good like, you. oh, this is different than what I thought would be the inside of it. Okay. I'm really glad you ate them because I, I sent you some and they were kind of still green a little bit too. Mm -hmm. So maybe they would have ripened more. I'm not sure. Maybe. Anyway. I would say I finally succeeded on putting the flavor of a mystery fruit ah, on display. Yes. <laughs> I don't know what that was. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited about it. So this had, uh, it says about two cups or everything in this recipe was by weight. So I did everything by weight, which, you know, is my favorite thing when it comes to baking. Well, so much easier. Oh, so much easier. I love measuring stuff out by weight on the scale for Put it on the baking. scale, cancel out the bowl, add your stuff. Yeah, and you'd have less to wash up at the end. Yeah, so it was really convenient. Um, so 300 grams of kumquats, and you're going to... I chopped these open and picked out all the seeds. I used like a barbecue skewer to get all the seeds popped out because I found okay. it was really easy just to go boop, boop, rather than trying to dig my fingers in and stuff. And then once you've got those, you pop them into a food processor and just pulse them until it breaks them down. You don't want to make a complete paste out of it because you'll lose the chunks of the skin, which I think is really important to get those bites in the okay. cake. Okay. So yeah. you don't want to make it totally smooth. I, I guess you could and it would probably still work, but I just pulsed it a few times to get them kind of roughly chopped and broken down and it made like a nice um, marmalade like a marmalade. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm picturing is kind of chunky. Yeah, skin. Yeah. And there was a lot more moisture in there once I had done that. And so I was kind of surprised because yeah. I was like, hmm, am I going to have some sort of weird, dry, pasty, chunky thing? No, it, mm -hmm. it actually got quite moist. So that was great. You're going to put sugar and eggs in a bowl and beat it until it is light and white and fluffy. Then you're going to measure out your flour and your baking powder. And then add half of that to your bowl and about half of the butter. So I just grated the butter into the bowl on top of the flour and then mixed it in and then just repeated that process again with the second half of flour and baking powder and butter. And it got really thick. It almost reminded me of the plum cake batter. Like it's a very thick batter. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to stir in yogurt and then you're going to add your kumquats in and stir that into. And then it all kind of starts to get thinner and pour that into a parchment lined ring form pan and bake it in your oven until it's a cake tester comes out clean. Which was about how long? And that for, you? for me, I'm just seeing if I wrote down my time. I think it was about 55 minutes, hmm, just about okay. an hour. And the nice thing about if you can line the sides of your spring form pan with the parchment paper, not just the bottom, you don't have to worry about it sticking to the sides and kind of um, being hard to release mm -hmm. and get like chunks and whatnot. One of my tips for lining the side of your pan is if you cut strips of parchment paper and then you take soft butter and you just put the soft butter onto the side of the pan in like two little globs, they almost act like sticky tack and hold the paper up so it doesn't collapse in while you're trying to pour your batter and all that jazz. Okay. And tip. then it just melts away. Nice. Yeah. And then 
Uh, you let it cool for about 15 minutes and while it's cooling that's when you start preparing the glaze that goes on it. And the glaze is just the juice of one orange and sugar. Why wouldn't you use kumquat? I don't think they're juicy enough. Maybe if you kept some of your chopped it would kumquat be too or thick. do a little extra. No, but then blend it further until oh, it's like maybe. more like puree. Yeah, maybe. I'm, I'm not sure. Stuff up. I have no idea. So it was a really <laughs> small amount of orange juice that came out of one orange. Like it's not yeah. a ton. And then you add your, your sugar in there. And then it took a while to melt that sugar in and get it to dissolve just because it's not much juice and a lot of sugar. Mm. Once you get all your sugar dissolved, you can just pour it right on top of your cake and then brush it around with a pastry brush and let it cool. And voila, kumquat cake. So what did you think of the flavor of these kumquats? Because I gave mm. you a few little ones and mm -hmm. you bit right into them. I did. Which is a weird thing to do when you haven't done that before because you think <laughs> through the skin and even... So you gave me three. I had one, mm -hmm. my husband had one, and then one of my kids had one. And everybody was hesitant to like bite through the yes. <laughs> skin. We're like, really? You just bite in? I know. I handed it to my husband and he was like, he backed yeah, do up do and it? did like a, oh, don't put that in my mouth. <laughs> I know. Mine said, can you peel it for me? I'm like, no, you don't peel it. Look how tiny it is. Can you imagine having to peel that thing? <laughs> right? You just have to watch out for the seeds. It's kind of a hard flavor to describe. It's not quite an orange, although it's similar to an orange. Yeah. I don't really know how I would describe the flavor. It's sweet, but not like crazy sweet. Mm -hmm. I should have made notes maybe <laughs> while I, when I was eating it. But, I mean, they're really good, but not like, I also wouldn't be like, oh, give me a whole bowl full. I'm just going to. No, I don't think I would just sit and eat them. Yeah. But they were very. I would almost guess that they're maybe like tangerine like or something because mm. it was like a different it was an orange like sweetness but it had a very different thing going on and like biting through the skin and you get all the oil in the skin plus that sweet flavor it was really interesting really right interesting yeah <laughs> and it just like stuck around forever i don't know about you but like after i ate the first one and i was making the cake i was like I still taste this in my mouth. Mm. Like it was so, it just coated my whole mouth. Oh my God. Oh, you know what it reminded me of when it was baked, which mm. I think is different than when it's just the raw fruit is yeah. ginger. To me, it was like, it almost, I was almost expecting you to say there was ginger in the cake. Oh, no way. I got something like candied ginger out of it. Oh, but that's interesting. It was so good, but not fully. Like, it wasn't like a ginger cake. It just, you almost it, get like a little hint of something that was, that reminded me of candied ginger. So delicious. This is like, mm. I would say this is like a, a favorite cake. Of my, like, I loved it <laughs> so much. It was <laughs> so good. And now to hear how simple it is. Like, yeah, there's not much in there aside. It's like a white cake with kumquats mm -hmm. that all that flavor that comes from them mm. yeah like they were the only thing that really added flavor to this and it was yeah yeah quite was... intense did you love it as much as i did yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. the God, whole was... family loved it so oh. so much and i think it's the key is that the sweetness is in the peel with that with the oil in the peel like it just and the texture that it gives too. When you talked about not pureeing it and leaving chunks in there, that was, I thought, fantastic. Because when you hit a bite with like that yes. chunk of the fruit was so intense and like, And then oh, you just sat so there good. and chewed on that little <laughs> bite and it just, oh yeah, it was, it was so, so, good. so good. I am so glad I picked these up at the store. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I want to go and get some and make it because it, oh, wow so good my kids thought it would be really good with a cream cheese icing on it because mm. they mm. love like a carrot cake with a with a cream cheese icing and i thought you know what that might not be so bad i think it would be good too especially if you want to like maybe like make it more of a fancy mm -hmm. cake because it's it is a beautiful cake look at the photo it's a beautiful cake yeah um, but it's, it's very simple. simple so maybe if you did want to decorate it that yeah. would be good yeah. Although I would just leave it as is. Honestly, it was fantastic. 
sometimes I think like a very simple cake like that, can, there's a danger of it being dry because there's not, I don't yeah. know, there's not more to it, right? But mm-hmm. this, and when you said the fruit was not very juicy, which I found too when I ate it, yeah. there's that danger of it being, oh no, it could be a crumbly kind of cake, but it wasn't at all. Yeah. It was really moist. and I think that yogurt that goes in there, it's a mm. Greek yogurt that you add in just it says 100 grams so one of those greek yogurts that you buy in the little like the individual little serving size guys just scooped that in there and i had a vanilla one so oh you know vanilla yumminess, but <laughs> i think this is a really good cake to make like any time it was super simple to make i loved that everything was in grams so it wasn't super fussy to measure everything out and it it didn't take much to put together I was really impressed with how simple this is because I don't make cakes much this this was Mm -hmm. a winner yeah you don't need a bunch of ingredients the only thing is find those kumquats when they're um in season or when they appear wherever you live (laughs) yeah I don't know that they're in season when we get anything I don't know when the seasons are but I think January February is when kumquats oh and I did start seeds who knows Maybe there'll be a kumquat tree growing yes. for next year's cake. <laughs> there might be. It's going to grow next to my apple tree bonsai. Well, I'm glad you made this cake because, yeah, this was an impulse buy that uh, paid off big time. And now for the fine print. Join us over on the socials, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Pinterest, and on our website at threekitchenspodcast.com. And remember, when you like, follow, subscribe, and review, it helps more people find us. Thank you so much for listening. Don't be scared of the peel, everybody. (laughs) Like we were.